Hello to TI Precision Labs. In this series, we are going to discuss Low Voltage Differential Signaling, or LVDS for short. In this session, we will go over the fundamentals of multi-drop LVDS, what it is, how it works, and where it can be used. This will include the architecture, electrical characteristics, and design considerations. If you have not watched the first part of this series, What is LVDS?, please watch that before continuing this video. Multi-drop LVDS is defined by the TIA-EIA 644A standard, which is an update of the TIA-EIA 644 standard that defines point-to-point -point LVDS. The update allows for up to 32 receivers to be connected to one driver, and requires only one termination resistor at the furthest receiver. Just like with regular LVDS, it's a physical layer only, which means it's purely electrical. The electrical characteristics are, for the most part, the same as regular point-to-point -point LVDS. The driver is typically a 3.5 milliamp current source that generates a 350 millivolt swing signal centered around 1.2 volts when terminated with 100 ohms at the receiver. The key difference between the 644 standard and the 644A standard is the addition of a leakage current limitation spec. The 644A standard requires receiver inputs to have less than 20 microamps of leakage current to ensure that the receiver is high impedance across the entire common mode range. This ensures that the receiver is high impedance, at least 120k ohm, across the entire common mode range. This is important because due to the increased load of multiple receivers, the effective impedance that the driver sees is lowered. Think of multiple resistors being connected in parallel. Remember, we want the receiver impedance to be as high as possible so that virtually all of the current flowing from the driver goes through the termination resistor to generate the differential voltage. You can see this illustrated in the test circuit depicted in the 644A standard. The 3.74 kilo ohm represents 32 receiver nodes, 120 kilo ohm each, connected to one driver, and the V-test represents the common mode voltage range of the receiver. The same design considerations as normal LVDS also apply to multi-drop LVDS with some additional parameters. The most important consideration is the stub length. Stubs are created each time an additional receiver is connected to a driver. It is very important to keep the stub lengths as short as possible because they create impedance mismatches that have a significant impact on signal integrity. As a rule of thumb, stubs should be kept to less than four centimeters. So how many receivers can a driver really support? Well, the theoretical max numbers of receivers supported by the spec is 32, but in practice, this number may be much lower. It is heavily dependent on the system, specifically stub length, signal frequency, and trace or cable length. Signal integrity challenges caused by stubs, as well as the number of receivers connected, also limits the max data rate to 250 megabits per second in most instances. As all of these parameters are dependent on each other, it is difficult to quantify them as they're all very much system dependent. It's best to test the system with a prototype or simulate the system in an application environment. With a prototype setup, you can take eye diagram measurements at the load to determine the max amount of jitter allowed for error-free transmission. You can also use the eye diagram height to determine whether or not the 100 millivolt threshold for the receiver is being met. For a recap of eye diagrams, a link to the pre Precision Lab videos is provided at the end of the presentation. Be sure to visit our E2E support forums at ti.com E2E, where we can help answer questions about designing with interface technologies. Please also reference previous TI Precision Labs videos, like our video on eye diagrams, as well as our first video on LVDS.